Hello, good afternoon. You're watching Closing Trades on ET Now. I'll call it the impact of weekly options expiry, but there is a definite undoing as far as the market mood is concerned. From those levels of 25,600 that we saw earlier in the day, we are off almost what 200 points now, staring at a level of 25,400, very close to the lowest point of the trading session. What's most spectacular is the kind of underperformance that we have been witnessing from the broader markets. It's been the trend this week so far. We have seen that the broader markets have been starkly underperforming the frontline index. Today as well, whether you look at the mid-cap index, the small-cap index, they are down and out and even the advanced decline ratio is clearly in favor of declines as we speak. The other important um, you know, underlying trend has been the outperformance of the banking index. At least that is holding on for now. We have an uh, up move of almost half a percent on the banking index today, uh, almost 230 point. Yes, it's off the highest point of the trading session, but at least there's green on the screen as far as the uh, Nifty Bank is concerned. Kotak, HDFC, Indusin, Axis, these are your top performers from the banking index. And of course, for the frontline index, it's been about NTPC on account of that, Renewable DRHP, Nestle, HUL, Kotak, Maruti. So some of these names getting a bit of a fillip. Remember, consumption usually does better in, in scenario of a rate cut, and that seems to be playing out, at least at the moment. Of course, we'll have to wait by and see um, how the next one up pans out. But broader markets, Aisha, there is a couple of, uh, you know, uh, there are a couple of these names from the Alcobev index like United Breweries that are reacting and then Rainbow Children on account of that IFL note is up 8%. Yeah, absolutely. So while yes, there is a fair amount of selling if you were to look at HAL, uh, but uh, like Anisha flagged off, there are those handful of movers as well and AU Bank, NTPC, UBL, but largely you would have to say the gains are quite restricted to the large caps today. The broader end of the market, like we were just pointing out, the advanced decline, uh, that is relatively under pressure and a serious bar of profit taking in select few names, which of course we'll probe a little later. But Kanal Naresh and Dinsha Irani joins us on the show today. Dinsha, hi, uh, good afternoon, good to have you on the show. Uh, what is it that you're making? Life after 50 bips cut, what does it spell for India? Aisha, thank you for having me on your show and a very good afternoon to you and your viewers. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, history repeats. Uh, every time there's been a rate cut, uh, you've seen a fall off uh, of the market. I think it's basically sell on news, uh, which happens. But uh, I don't think this time around, I feel it's a bit different. It's uh, different because the cuts are happening into the strength of the economy. I mean, they're obviously unemployment all is uh, picking up there. But the fact is that the economy is not in a recession. Uh, I think what the takeaway is that the last time the Fed has done these kind of 50 bip hikes, I mean, rather cuts, uh, a, a, when they started off their uh, cutting season with 50 bips itself, uh, I think it's been three uh, uh, times earlier. And all the three times it led to a very big recession because they were fighting a, a demon at that point in time. But today today is not that time. I mean, it's, a, it's very different from uh, what's happening here. However, having said that, I think the biggest beneficiary would be obviously the uh, rate sensitive like emerging markets where as in when this cuts uh, gets built in. So you will see flows coming back to India or well, they already are happening, but I think uh, that will continue. Flows will continue and yes, that 50 basis point cut, but there are a lot of arguments to suggest that of course it's not a situation that we saw in 2007 when there was that 50 basis point cut, but I guess recession is something which only time will tell us. Um, but the other big talking point then sure is the fact the underperformance of the broader markets. Do you think finally they're getting undone and uh, this is that valuation scare that all of you guys were flagging out earlier that they have run up quite a bit? Actually, you're right because I mean we've been always uh, pointing out that the mid caps itself looked very overpriced. I mean, I the last I saw the premiums to large caps was standing at close to 80% which history, if you look at the last 10 years, even the history, the average is around 20 odd percent. If you if you take away this uh, present uh, blip as such, it was 20 odd percent. So this this kind of an overvaluation wouldn't have sustained. That was what our feel was. And obviously, I mean, the fundamentals of the rent kick in uh, to that extent. Normally, they have a delta of 5, 7, 10 percent over the large caps in terms of earnings growth. But the last two quarters have seen the delta shrink quite appreciably. In fact, in the last uh, quarter of June reported quarter, uh, it was a negative delta to the large cap earnings. So it was a matter of time before this seeps in. But I uh, actually am not that uh, sure whether this will be uh, our, our best case scenario actually was supposed to be a time correction. Um, well, the price correction it always helps 
in the sense that you will see uh, those remaining on the sidelines coming back into the markets as such. So, Dinshaw, in your own funds, have you eased off from any specific small and mid caps, either sectors or you know select category stocks? Actually, we've always been comfortable with small caps because uh, actually uh, the premium. I mean, normally the small caps trade at ten percent discount to large caps, uh, but we saw in the last ten years. I mean, this is ten year averages. But if you see the recent uh, run, they're more almost at par uh, to the large caps. In certain cases, there were certain uh, discounts happening to the large caps. So we were never that uncomfortable with the small cap space. Uh, and frankly, I mean, small caps are anything beyond 250 shares is small caps. The, the for top 250 shares is small caps. So we had always a good option of selecting from a wide variety of uh, picks from here. So small caps, we've not eased off. We did ease off a bit on the mid cap space. Uh, but looking at the fall today, I think we, I wish we would have missed uh, eased off a bit more. But anyway, that's how life is. Okay, so that's the take coming in. But, um, you know, telecom as a sector is the, uh, you know, thing to talk about today. Of course, we have seen that negative reaction coming in on the Supreme Court verdict. So, Vodafone idea is down 18%. Indus Towers is down 10%. Um, is it time now, Dinshaw, to perhaps start allocating some funds because the risk reward of value is there on the table or not at all? This is not something that one should invest in or maybe just some part of portfolio as a punt? So basically, in pure telecom play, there was only one stock which was available, which is, I mean, Bharti. We were never never convinced on uh, Voda idea. And uh, I mean, given the kind of uh, debt the fellow was carrying and obviously the the liabilities, uh, the forward liabilities that he had to undertake. Uh, and I frankly, I mean, I looking at the past also, we weren't too, uh, we weren't too hopeful that uh, something positive will come out from the AGR case as such. And that's what transpired, I suppose. And I think the stock is back at the level at which it started as uh, going, I mean, in the past. So frankly, I mean, I think uh, Bharti stands out in this as a pure telecom play, obviously. Uh, and uh, given the kind of strength that uh, the the stock has, in the, in the business has, uh, in terms of uh, the broadband mix and the uh, uh, postpaid uh, uh, customer mix and stuff like that. I think it's a uh, it's a stock to hold for a while. We already have it in our portfolio, so I can disclose that that we're fairly uh, bullish on that stock. Right. Then, sure. Uh, specifically, I want to pick up the point on PSUs. You know, because uh, while a large part of consolidation correction also played out, but that was very restrictive to a few cluster of stocks. I mean, a HAL, some of the other defense names never moved anywhere. In fact, kept on clocking fresh eyes. Right. Today, perhaps you're seeing a accelerated selling, and I can say that about PFCREC as well. There's HAL, BEL, all these stocks down. Uh, would you say that now we'll begin that leg of correction? Even the oil and gas companies, Aisha, I think you're missing those out as such, I suppose. But anyway, yeah. I, so, so basically, we uh, going into the budget itself, we took a call that PSUs uh, looked fairly overpriced. I think uh, the budget was a. Uh, it was a non-event for PSUs, uh, frankly. I mean, if anything, it was slightly negative given that they had cut off on defense spends and stuff like that. Uh, so it was obvious that, uh, and, and for some reason, the PSUs kept moving up despite the uh, kind of budget that came out. But we never did add to that position. We, uh, uh, In fact, we even in the defense space, we chopped up a bit. Uh, and that's how it has been. We've been moving out of PSU space for a while. I don't think... Uh, Going forward, unless something uh, dramatic happens and since uh, sell-off happens, sell-off as in uh, the divestment happens in the, in the case of PSUs, I don't think uh, there'll be any positive triggers uh, today uh, for that space per se. So lack of triggers as far as the PSU basket is concerned. But before we let you go, your view on financials, especially the large cap private banks, uh, what within that looks the most interesting to you? Is it the underperformer HDFC bank? Is it the consistent ICICI bank? Actually, you can see that smile on my face. We've always been bullish on banks. And for some reason, uh, the banking space never performed, thanks to, I think, the crunch on liquidity and the system. Uh, and all along, we've been saying that once the interest rates cuts happen, I think the bank space will be a very interesting space to watch. Uh, and we're hoping that RBI will infuse some liquidity back into the system as such. Uh, so frankly, I mean, I, I don't... Uh, PSU space, obviously, we are not that comfortable. Uh, private sector banks, again, uh, 
uh, we've been fairly bullish and uh, whatever names you've taken are there in our portfolio plus more. Uh, and we continue to be bullish on that space. And uh, frankly, I mean, if you're, if you're talking about the economy growing the way it is expected to for our country, uh, this space is going to do wonders. Hey, Dinshaw, always good to chat uh, with you. Thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure, Asha. Thank you. Okay, let's take stock of what the market is up to. Definitely quite off from the day's highs and um, it's getting a little excruciating at least in select pockets for uh, the broader end of the market, the mid and small caps and the advanced decline hands have completely turned in favor of the declines and they're staying put there. Let's welcome on board Kunal Naresh and figure out what's happening on the charts right now. Kunal, what's today's price action telling you at an index level? Yeah, so I think it uh, looks like that the mid cap and the small cap in the market are the ones where you're seeing uh, you know, a, a sharp sector rotation because uh, you know, that's where we've seen a lot of profit booking from individual stocks. And the money is definitely moving back towards the financials and the you know, banking index because we've seen that uh, you know, the, this index has been an outperformer. Nifty IT index is also another you know, index which is over the last two days which has seen a follow through selling. So for example, yesterday many of these large cap IT stocks they were down some 3-4%. Today you're seeing another uh, you know, residual correction of another 1.5-2% broadly for many of these stocks, which also indicates that uh, uh, you know, the, the churn is coming back into from the IT stocks towards the banking and the financial names. So my sense is that uh, you know, uh, maybe if this uh, you know, correction doesn't get aggravated and if we don't break below the 25,250 mark, which I believe is a very crucial support for the index over the near term, we could probably be at a point where the bank, uh, the bank Nifty and the banking index may start to outperform. But the markets could continue to remain choppy, especially the mid cap and the small cap end. Mm -hmm. Okay, the mid cap and small cap can continue to stay choppy. It is the banking index which is coming back. Nuresh, what are your thoughts on the markets and the sectors that look strong? So, what we are seeing is a rotation which is now being played out. So, banking, finally, the rotation has been there for the last few sessions. If you see clearly, they've been outperforming the indices. And uh, we've taken a small dip on the mid cap and the small cap indices. They're both off one and a half, two percent. But just three days back, they were at an all time high. At the same at the same time, globally, there is not much of a problem. As of now, the Dow futures is back to the highs of yesterday, sub 400 points. So there's a little bit of a jitter given the uh, Fed rate cut of 50 bips. But for now, the trend is still positive till the time we don't break recent swing lows on the Nifty as well as on the small cap indices. We'll continue to see selective moves. But banks is the one which has clearly taken leadership, especially the Lagards, which is HDFC Bank and Kotak Bank. They both still look interesting on dips. Point taken. So those are some of the names that still look interesting. Time now to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. Lots lined up when we come back. Back with closing trades right here in ET now and uh, still under pressure for our markets. It's quite intriguing the way our markets are panning out because that's not how the rest of the globe has been. Um, look at how Asia actually shut shop for the day. Uh, the investors uh, clearly managed to uh, digest that outsized Fed rate cut. Uh, Japan closed in with over a 2% gain. Uh, you had Hong Kong with a 2% uh, gain again because there too the central bank had cut rates. Shanghai closed in with a six-tenths of a percent gain. And even the periphery markets like Korea, Australia have done quite okay. Europe, big bang move there. One percent higher. The DAX is now scaling higher than 200 points of a gain. One percent up for the FTSE as well. Over a hundred point gain for the CAC, equating to almost a two percent notch up now. And even the broader markets, stock 600, FTSE MIB, they're all scaling up very nicely. Not just that, look at the move that you're seeing on the US futures right now. We're scaling almost 450 points higher for the Dow futures, the S&P futures higher by percent and a half, and almost a rip-roaring 2% move coming in for the NASDAQ futures. So you would have to say that we definitely are the global underperformers today. But let me welcome on board Venugopal Mangat and find out where is it that they are seeing opportunities when it comes to India. Of course, they've launched a new fund as well. So let's chat a little bit more about that. Uh, Venugopal, hi. Great to have you today on ET Now. Uh, first, I want to you know, talk a little bit about this Export Opportunities Fund, the NFO. Uh, tell us a little bit more about it as to what the rationale and the theme is. Yeah, hi. Uh, this is uh, um, focused on the op export opportunities from India. So we are looking at a uh, universe of stocks or companies that would be having uh, exports revenues of more than 20%. Uh, and it can 
comprise of both merchandise exports as well as services exports. Both will have a place in the portfolio. Uh, it would be a flexi cap kind of portfolio, which means that it can have large, mid and small caps across uh, the spectrum. Uh, the focus on exports is clearly uh, very strong from the government side, as well as uh, the country is doing well, uh, the economy is doing well. And one of the key ingredients uh, of our um, growth over the next, the forecasted growth over the next uh, five to seven years is the exports component. Uh, and uh, and that is what we are looking at to target and specifically the companies that are exporting and likely to do well on the export side over the next five to seven years. Say that because in the backdrop of the outsized Fed rate cut, wanted to understand how you think the services piece, which is largely dominated by IT services, is going to pan out. Yeah, I think um, of the overall services exports pie that India has, uh, about 50% still remains IT ex services exports. Uh, while that uh, has been doing well for some time, the growth rates have um, tapered off uh, if you look at the last 25 years or so. Uh, and uh, and we believe that, you know, the, um, the post-COVID boom that uh, the IT sector saw and the outperformance of stocks that I think is behind now. Um, you had a year or you know two of a uh, little bit of underperformance off and on uh, the sector coming back. But I guess uh, the deal wins of the last year should come back uh, and and provide gains in terms of revenue growth as we go forward. Uh, I think the second quarter should be better than the first quarter across or in general across the sector. Uh, and uh, as we go forward into the third and fourth quarters and probably into the next uh, financial year, we should see better growth coming from the IT space. But IT is not the only um, part of the services exports that we are looking at. We are looking at all other uh, segments um, outside IT as well, of which um, engineering research and development and the professional management consulting, those are segments that are also contributing significantly to the services exports from the country. Factoring exports, and especially pharma at that, do you think Biosecure Act could be one of those triggers that could uh, boost that further? Yeah, I mean, uh, multiple triggers to the uh, export story. I think the government incentives are very strong. Uh, there's a large manufacturing capacity being built across multiple sectors. Um, we are already taking market share uh, in many segments um, in the global uh, arena. Uh, and the traditional export sectors um, uh, like gems and jewelry and textiles are now giving way or giving some market share away to uh, newer segments like electronics and you know manufacturing, industrial goods, et cetera. And plus the, what you mentioned, uh, pharmaceutical ingredients, chemicals, specialty chemicals, all of those are now gaining uh, market share within the global uh, uh, export space. Uh, so clearly, um, we are looking at uh, some of those opportunities as well, and it uh, should be an exciting phase over the next uh, five years or so. Okay, point taken. So that's about this uh, specific NFO that you're launching and the fund that you're watching out for. But what about the market expectation? Uh, because a lot of participants have been saying that we've borrowed returns from future. There is that expectation of a time-wise correction wasn't really playing out and right now as well it's the frontline index that continues to do well even though uh, broader markets are a bit under pressure. Uh, within this construct how should one look at a bit of a portfolio reject? Yes I think uh, the markets have done extremely well over the last uh, few years and uh, having run up so sharply and we've not seen too many large uh, corrections uh, in this uh, entire run up uh, barring three to four percent corrections, uh, you know, uh, intermittently uh, in this last uh, twelve to eighteen months, um, my guess is that my uh, sense is that the valuations have moved up and warrant some bit of profit booking. So that's what's uh, seen in the broad markets, uh, which is healthy as well, given that uh, you know valuations have run up and prices have um, uh, uh, you know uh, moved up. Uh, they it definitely warrant some profit booking. But um, the medium to long term story remains intact. I think the economic growth um, expectations continue to be fairly strong. And on the back of that, I think the earnings growth expectations also uh, remain fairly uh, strong. So 
uh, with those uh, as a backdrop, I think the markets are likely to remain fairly uh, strong and positive uh, over the next uh, or the medium to long term. Um, in the very short term, given the run up uh, that we've had uh, in the markets, uh, a time correction or a, 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 a small correction in the markets could be expected. Uh, we're already seeing that happening with uh, the broad market stocks correcting more, the index being steady. And one of the reasons for that is also that uh, some of the large cap stocks or the index heavyweights are now getting back into you know favor and uh, their numbers should uh, um, you know get better um, maybe this quarter and and going forward uh, some the some of the sectors that were not doing well so far like the consumer staples sector or the private banks etc those are also now coming back and so those are all large heavyweights within the index and therefore the index is not really showing you that kind of weakness but the uh, broad market is seeing some profit booking over the last few days. We've seen stocks correcting quite meaningfully. That's the latest. Thanks so much for making time and speaking with us today. Appreciate you joining us on the show. But talking about some of the other buzzes right now, at least on the losing side, you do have IFL Finance down about 8%. There were earlier reports, uh, you know, which were suggesting that there could perhaps be a downgrade and job cuts to the tune of 9,000 headcount. Uh, let's, uh, let me take it across to my colleague Anurag Joshi, who's joining us with the latest on this one. Anurag, lots of reports doing rounds, but tell us what you are picking up. So IFL Finance uh, fell as much as almost 9% uh, on fresh concerns and these are mounting concerns about the credit profile of the company. Uh, now the concerns and the worries among investors about the credit profile of IFL Finance uh, stem from one key factor which is the regulatory restriction, this is the RBI restriction on the gold loan lending, uh, gold loan backed lending uh, that the company uh, did uh, and uh, this is uh, one of the key reasons which has also dragged down the company's stock price also in fact just yesterday Fitch Ratings has come out with a note where uh, they have placed the company's credit ratings at a rating watch negative uh, that those uh, ratings may remain at a uh, rating watch negative and Fitch uh, noted that the action is due to the ongoing pressure uh, on the credit profile and uh, Fitch is currently rating uh, IFL Finance at B plus, uh, there are uh, uh, the local uh, rating. Uh companies, uh, Crystal, Ikra, India Ratings and Care, they rate uh, IFL Finance at AA and uh, there, were, there were media reports that uh, they, the company could face a rating downgrade. There is a threat of a rating downgrade as soon as next week and also that report had flagged the risk of job cuts uh, at the company. Okay, point taken. So that's the latest coming in. Thanks so much, Anurag, for joining us with the latest on that one. The stock right now down about 8%. But what are the closing trade ideas coming in from our charters? Let me first take it across to Kunal. Kunal, 2.58, just around that 3 p.m. mark for the markets and their weekly expiry move. But what are the closing trade ideas? So Voltas is something which is looking attractive. The stock is uh, you know, still trading at the 1900 levels. Uh, you know, the last three days we've seen the stock uh, going through a mild correction from 1930 to sub 1900 mark. So I think at current levels, the risk reward is attractive for a you know, contra buy, expecting the stock to come back to that 1930 plus mark over the way near term. Okay, Nuresh, what about you? Nuresh, what's your closing trade idea? That would, that would be a buy on the Jubilee Foodworks. The stock has been making higher tops and higher bottoms even in this market. A new 52 week high year, which has been done and crossing a price which was last seen two years back. So momentum seems to be back on the stock, could slowly and steadily go towards the 750 mark. Okay, let's take a very quick break. Then on that note, still underperforming the rest of the globe. Let's see how the last lap of today's trade pans out. Welcome back. Well, for the markets, it continues to be pretty sideways actually after that big drop that we have seen. We're holding on to 400. There's not a further worsening from that. What is actually worsening is the entire telecom space. In fact, Vodafone Idea is right now down almost 20%. The last time I checked, it was down almost 19% thereabouts. Yes, it is down 20% um, as far as Vodafone Idea is concerned. And Indistar is too down in the trading session. In fact, I think we have Somit joining us. So let me toss it across to him to get a better sense. Somit, a couple of brokerage houses have come out with the reports the likes of CLSA, JM Financial. What's their take on the Supreme Court verdict today? 
Both the brokerages, that is Gem Financial and CLSA, are kind of uh, disappointed with the uh, Supreme Court announcement given the fact that a lot was banking on the Supreme Court announcement when it comes to specifically on Vodafone Idea. And given the fact that now Vodafone Idea's survive, uh, survivability is on uh, risk, uh, they, are, they are also, uh, Gem Financial says that the uh, downtick in Indastars is because of that, because uh, Vodafone Idea's survivability is at a, a key risk post this announcement that has uh, come in. There also, Gem Financial also says that the curative petition if would have been approved then that would have lowered Vodafone Ideas annual cash outflow by nearly 8,000 crore rupees and they have maintained their 10 rupees target price on Vodafone Idea given the fact that that was uh, not accounting for any uh, AGR relief uh, so far. When it comes to CLSA they are saying that Vodafone Idea could uh, face a financial cr a crisis in the second half of FY26 and FY27 uh, given the fact that from then uh, the uh, AGR dues, uh, AGR payment were uh, due for the company and they have also maintained their target price on uh, on Vodafone Idea at, uh, 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 they have maintained the rating on Vodafone Idea at underperform and they are saying that uh, uh, AGR relief would have increased the target price by around 7 rupees for Vodafone Idea and for Bharti Airtel, the AGR risk accounts for nearly 62 rupees. So if there would have been a relief, the target price could have been higher by around 62 rupees for Bharti Airtel. Okay, so that was about the telecom sector and the brokerages coming in. But what about the FTSE and Sensex Rebal, which are expected today? A big flows coming in or uh, something that we have been seeing of late, Samit? See, September 2024 changes and uh, on Sensex are due on uh, September 28th. The uh, adjustments that is the flow inflows and outflows will happen on September uh, 28th. Now for FITSI, uh, analysts are expecting uh, rebalancing impact or rebalancing flows of around 1 um, billion US uh, dollars and the key stocks that would see the highest inflows uh, on this uh, would be Kotak Mahindra Bank and ICICI Bank. ICICI Bank is expected to see an inflow of close to 236 million US dollars while Kotak Mahindra Bank would see an inflow of close to 105 million US dollars. Apart from that, few stocks that are getting added to the FTSE index that could see uh, inflows are G, uh, GET and D, Endurance Tech, KI Industries, Hitachi Energy, Lloyds, Metal, Escorts, Kubota. The inflows could be anywhere between 17 to 28 million US dollars. Uh, and apart from that, MNM is one stock that could see an outflow of around 65 million US dollars on the back of the FTSE, rebalancing their weightage is going down. However, this outflow would be largely offset on the back of the uh, MNM's income. Uh, weight increase when it comes to the Sensex index. Uh, Nuama is expecting an inflow of close to 60 million US dollars on the back of that. Apart from that, it's Bajaj, Finsav, and Axis Bank who, uh, who will see some inflows on the back of higher weightage in the Sensex in the range of around 7 to 30 million US dollars. And when it comes to uh, weightage uh, weight reduction, it's Reliance Industries, Ultratech, Infosys, HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank. TCS and LNT, which could see a lower weightage in the Sensex because of which there could be outflows of close to 5 to 12 million US dollars. Right, Samit, we leave it at that. In the meantime, um, the Adani group has expressed its solidarity with the flood-ridden Andhra Pradesh. In fact, uh, Adani Port's chief, Karan Adani, also extended support via the Adani Foundation with a contribution of 25 crores as a relief. Gautam Adani, in a tweet, says that they are deeply troubled by the extensive damage caused across the state too. Let's now welcome on board Sudeep Bandhapadhyay. So much to chat about. Sudeep, hi, afternoon. Uh, good to have you on the show as always. Let's first start off with the telecom stocks. Uh, what's the way forward for Vodafone Idea and those investors who may be trapped in the stock? Well, Aisha, I, think I have been maintaining my view that buying uh, Vodafone Idea is like buying a lottery ticket. You know, and to a great extent, it depended on this, uh, you know, AGR issue. Uh, uh, unfortunately, that has not gone in favor and uh, you know, this is absolutely, uh, I would say, devastating for Vodafone Idea. Uh, the kind of cash uh, requirement which they will have on an annual basis on account of the AGR dues is kind of killing. Uh, so I think it's, it's it's real bad news for Voda Idea. Uh, the other issue which is plaguing Voda Idea, and I, I think this is quite different from the, uh, you know, this, this all these AGR dues and fundraising issues, is the operational challenges. I think that has been also acute. And, uh, you know, in spite of the uh, fundraising, which they did few months back, uh, the, the, they have been losing customers month on month. And that is definitely a very, very, uh, you know, bad uh, thing to, uh, to, 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 to you know, persist with uh, for a retail uh, uh, business on a month on month. Losing customer is definitely very bad news. So I think that part needs to be addressed also in a, on a war footing. Uh, yes, all these uh, you know, liquidity challenges are big, but even that operational issue is big. So they need to address both. Uh, uh, of course, now that the Supreme Court verdict 
uh, is uh, the, there, uh, they have to uh, go back to the drawing board as far as fundraising is concerned. Uh, fundraising becomes imperative for Vodafone Idea because, uh, uh, you know, uh, for that company, there is that financial crisis brewing, so they'll have to figure out a way out of that one. Um, but what else is happening in the market right now? The gaining size K K side, KPR Mill, Rainbow Children, AU Small Finance Bank, Policy Bazaar, United Breweries, these are the stocks doing well. Nuresh, AU Small Finance Bank, after a long time, that one seems to be breaking out a bit. And United Breweries, uh, do you expect it to trend higher? So AU has also given a short-term breakout, a flag breakout, and although it has been doing well over the last uh, uh, two weeks, uh, good follow-up momentum today. So uh, looks interesting. It could go back to 800 levels. United Breweries have a positive bias here. The stock has uh, been consolidating around the 2130, 2150 highs for the last almost uh, four or five months. Uh, there have been at least five to seven attempts today. Also, it's been taking a resistance around that area. If it sustains 2150 levels. That would be a clean breakout and should actually take it much higher towards 2300, 2400. So that's the possibility and good volumes today. So that's a, a positive indication. So setting up for a breakout in the next few sessions. Okay, that's the take coming in on UBL right now. That stock definitely holding out well. But Sudeep, we've been talking about, you know, uh, the kind of froth building up in this place. And today, the PSUs and, you know, pretty much across the board, they're, you know, really getting thrashed out. Wanted to understand whether you see some continued selling pressure. Certain pockets, and I have discussed this with you many times, that, uh, you know, particularly defense, railways, uh, definitely the valuation was looking rich. And uh, uh, the margin of error was very, very limited. Uh, and some amount of correction was bound to happen. And pretty much that's what is happening. Uh, there have been some reports in the recent past from various research houses whereby uh, the targets have been uh, brought down significantly, particularly in case of Mazagao Dock uh, and the likes. Uh, so I, I, well, uh, I'm not saying that those are the uh, targets for these stocks, but the fact is they were at an elevated level and some correction was definitely on the cards. Uh, so uh, again, I must mention that none of these stocks are uh, you know, bad stocks or they don't have prospects. They all have been doing good. There is a lot of uh, uh, activity in both the sectors and many other sectors where these PSUs are operating. But the valuation needs to be uh, in line with what's happening on ground. And it has run up really, really fast. So bit of correction is part for the course. That's what I will say. Uh, one space uh, as far as PSU is concerned where I'm still positive is the power space. I think that's where there is a secular, uh, you know, a structural uh, 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 change which is happening and that's for the better. Uh, look at NTPC, even in this and the uh, unlocking of value which is happening to the green energy business, I think it's uh, commendable and it has moved up and it is uh, definitely at a place where investors can even now look at acquiring for long term. Uh, some of the power financing companies, though they have uh, you know, uh, uh, been affected by a bit of correction today, uh, still they look good because considering the total power demand and the capacity which is coming up, uh, power finance companies will have a lot of business and profitable business at that. So uh, power finance companies, some of the power companies and also power ancillary companies for long term can be looked at even at current levels. In fact, NTPC, the green energy arm, has filed for a DRHP. It's going to be a 10,000 crore rupee IPO. And that's keeping that stock warm. Other than that, of course, you know, I want to check in on what the sugar names as well are up to. A fair amount of buoyancy the last fortnight. And now sources are telling us that the food ministry has sent a proposal to increase the ethanol prices by a good two to five rupees per litre. Uh, not Dhampur, but Banrampur perhaps is going to be the more actively traded one. That should come up for you on your screens next. And uh, Dwarakesh holding out, but Rampur will be up next. AU Bank, ICICI, GI, Jubilant Foods, NTPC, these are some of the other green sparks. But Sudeep, uh, now that we are officially into the festive season, soon you'll have Navratri, the Shara, the Diwali. Wanted to understand where is it that you see some meaningful pickup happen because there's clearly a slowdown within passenger vehicles too. There's one space where definitely we are expecting pickup is uh, the two wheeler space. And uh, Hero Motor uh, com uh, uh, comes to mind straight away. I think uh, valuation-wise also, it's uh, in a better place compared to the peers. Uh, you know, and they have a significant rural uh, semi-urban business. Uh, so I'm expecting pickup as far as Hero Motor Corp is concerned. Uh, also, uh, uh, there are certain pockets of uh, consumption where we believe there will be significant upswing. Uh, 
a uh, couple of FMCG companies comes to my mind. One is uh, Dabur. I think that's one uh, which has got 50% plus business coming from rural India and I expect a pick up there. Uh, HUL also can benefit uh, 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 on the back of rural up, uh, you know, upsurge. Uh, apart from these, some of the consumer durable uh, names, particularly on the lower end uh, uh, of consumer durable uh, franchise, they should uh, pick up. And uh, some of the uh, consu cons uh, retail uh, outlets or retail chains can benefit. And there, I would say, uh, some of the uh, smaller retail chains, uh, VMart and the likes, will benefit. It is coming in and how the consumption is expected to turn. But hear out what Dr. Sanjeev Goenka, the chairman at RP Sanjeev Goenka Group, had to tell us because he's talking about how First Source is likely to grow two and a half x in terms of the profits by FY28. Simply put, we expect to increase our profits by two and a half times in the next three years, say by 28. That is the expectation. For that, we need to get to 15% growth and we need to get to 14% margins. We have our building blocks in place where we are looking at our operations, we're looking at mining existing uh, customers, uh, and just getting from where we are with, say, 50 of our top clients, and getting to about between 5 to 10% wallet share would mean a $550 million additional revenue. Uh, we're adding new logos, and major wins are now getting to between two and three a quarter. We've invested in uh, GNA, which is beginning to uh, yield results. Our sales pipeline has grown dramatically from, say, about 400 odd to 740 odd. And we expect that to grow to about, our target is 1.2 billion at least. The onshore offshore ratio we're working on, and we've improved that, further scope to improve that. Uh, our attrition rates, further scope to improve that, get into more value accretive and margin accretive businesses and get into uh, uh, the whole area of, uh, of uh, change request billing. We've not been doing that. There are a lot of, lot of very simple banya unlocks that we are doing to actually increase our margins and increase our revenues. And of course, you're going to use technology, you're going to use things like generative AI and uh, everything that goes with it to add value to the customers, to give a better product to them. Okay, that's the word coming in from Sanjeev Goenka and, uh, you know, categorically stating that they are indeed expecting to increase profits by a good two and a half X and that's going to be as soon as uh, FI28. But let's get in some BTST trades. We've given up all of our gains for the Nifty as well now. Kunal, what's looking uh, good to trade? So I'll go with a uh, couple of buy calls. Titan is the stock which is heading towards a breakout. Still looking very calm on, uh, you know, this kind of a day. So uh, expecting the stock to confirm breakout in the next couple of days. Buy with a target of 3900, stop loss could be kept at 3700 mark. And the second would be a buy on HDFC Bank, again a stock which has done reasonably well uh, and you know, confirming a breakout of that 1700 mark which was the previous swing resistance for HDFC Bank. So buy with a target of 1750, stop loss at 1670. Right, Naresh, what about your BTST ideas? So first would be a buy on Jubilant Foods, good momentum here, fresh 52 week high, stop loss at 682, target price of 700. Second is a bank, Kotak Bank continues to be in momentum uh, crossing the recent few months high. Stop loss at 1850, target price of 1900. That's the latest coming in with respect to the BDSD ideas that you have uh, at this point of time. Um, yes, the markets have given up, but not KPR mills. That one continues to gain ground. In fact, that's up a solid 10% as we speak. Concord Biotech has taken a bit of a spring in its step. That stock too has perked up in the last few minutes. I'm also watching out for Avenue Supermarts. Let's bring up the intraday chart of Avenue Supermarts. Is it actually showing the kind of move that my screen is suggesting? Yes, that stock has moved up. Kunal, I think we haven't seen Avenue move up in a while. Is this backed by good volumes as well? And does that indicate any sort of breakout for the coming times? Not major volumes in the last half an hour, but yeah, I think, you know, the stock has been uh, 
you know, trading with a very positive bias over the last two, three months, I think from 3700 mark, I think uh, mid of March somewhere, the stock has just about gone into a uptrending mode quite well. Yes, there have been chunks of, uh, you know, uh, phases where the volumes have managed to move up higher and the stock has moved up its base or a support from 3700 mark to 4500 levels. The recent swing low for the stock, which was, I think, one week back was around the 5100 levels. So I think it has this uh, you know, tendency of trying to you know, pull the support up higher and the volumes on faces uh, tends to do pretty well for, for DMART. But I think it's a stock which is again showing signs of clear trend. So with 5100 as a closing base stopper, so I think traders can hold on to long positions over here. Okay, that's that on Avenue. That's where you're seeing a big spike up actually take place. Um, while amongst the large cap, it continues to be NTPC, Nestle, Kotak Bank, which are holding out. It's fizzled out for a Hindalco, for a Divis, for a TechM, for an m, &M. Kunal, what about the metals trade? Is that going to hold through? Yeah, it's it's a more of a positional trade for metal stocks because you know my sense is that these stocks are getting into a zone where you know they are identifying a couple of leaders like JSPL and JS Steel, which have been rank outperformers over the last two three weeks. And then once these stocks get back into a breakout mode, it's where the other stocks, which have been huge underperforming names, uh, you know uh, Tata Steel, Sale, uh, you know to that uh, extent even Vedanta. I think these stocks have been underperformers over the last many months. These stocks will also eventually try and uh, you know, play a catch up for themselves. So very bullish on the metal pack from the next one to three month perspective and uh, you know uh, expecting that breakout of 9500 mark for the Nifty Metal Index. Once we get that confirmation, we could be looking at a substantial 10 to 15 percent upside further for the index. Mm -hmm. Separately, oil India is also something which is coming up on my radar. That too, if you pull up the candlesticks perhaps or the intraday chart will tell you that in the last few minutes there has been a bit of a perk up. It's still in the red, but definitely a bit of a buying interest coming back. Do you think, uh, Sudeep, it's time to dabble back into the PSU basket or do you think they, there's going to be further consolidation in those names? As I was mentioning, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, apart from power, uh, I think power, there is a structural positive. Uh, I don't think I will look at other PSU stocks at this stage. Power sector definitely uh, continues to deserve attention, even at current levels. Uh, amongst the all other PSU, I think uh, post-correction PEL, uh, this is Bharat Electronics, uh, that looks good. And, and, and of course, it looks good from a long-term point of view, not uh, you know for a short-term uh, benefit. Uh, one has to remember that Bharat Electronics uh, caters to both Air Force, Arm, all Air Force, Army and Navy. Uh, also, they have started exports and the company has been very efficient always. Performance has been good. So, yes, the valuation even now is a bit stretched. But I think, uh, you know, uh, for a long-term investor, it's a good entry point post the correction. That's that on the PSUs and, of course, uh, BEL in specific. Uh, but, Sudeep, uh, for banks, do you also expect a meaningful recovery? I mean, it's it's already started to happen, but it's just that we've had so many false starts. Does it seem like sustainable this time? I think uh, it is bound to happen, uh, Aisha. The way I look at it, interest rates are bound to come down. It's just a matter of time before even in India, interest rates come, starts coming down. And uh, uh, definitely uh, the banks, efficient ones, will uh, benefit uh, disproportionately when interest rates do come down. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind. Of course, there is this, uh, you know, uh, fight for uh, low-cost deposits, and that's going to intensify in the coming months. Credit demand is increasing, so banks who are able to mobilize low-cost deposit will, uh, and of course, lend uh, effectively, will be the winners. And uh, in that matter, I think uh, I will uh, put my vote on uh, efficient private sector banks. Uh, I would uh, love long-term investors to continue looking at HDFC Bank. Uh, they can look at, uh, amongst the smaller banks, IDFC First Bank. I think uh, deposit mobilization there is happening at a rapid pace. Uh, balance sheet is improving. Uh, COVID-related uh, uh, write-offs have been taken. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, these are the banks where I think I'm bullish. Also taking advantage of the interest rate reduction going forward, uh, one should look at, uh, you know, the other uh, NBFCs like the gold loan companies and, of course, housing finance companies. There is an euphoria currently post Bajaj uh, housing finance listing. So uh, things are a bit heated up. But once things settle down uh, in about uh, a couple of weeks' time, one should relook at some of the uh, you know performing housing finance companies. They are good for long term. Point taken. So that's the latest on some of these companies. But yes, take a look at Bajaj Housing Finance after those 
uh, you know that massive listing on uh, Monday and since then the up move today at least that stock is in the negative territory now just consolidating around that 160 rupees mark in fact Sudeep that's the case he, uh, with a couple of other IPOs as well Ola saw that increased uh, you know traction at the time of its listing then consolidated uh, the like of, uh, the likes of brain bees or first cry also had seen good listing and then consolidated um, any of these recent listings that you still like and would want to bet on if it does come at an attractive price value? Brainbase solution, which is first cry, uh, can be looked at uh, if it comes at attractive value. I think, uh, you know, the, there was not that much euphoria as far as Brainbase solution is concerned. Uh, I mean, it, it, uh, the euphoria can never be compared with an Ola or a Bajaj housing finance. Uh, so uh, Brainbase can be looked at. Uh, Kunal, Niresh, uh, Sudeep, all of you, thank you so much as always for time, uh, you know, taking the time out. Let me hand it over to Ashesha to um, wrap up how the closing trades have been for us. Well, absolutely. It turned out to be a volatile day on Dalal Street today. We gave up most of those morning gains, nearly 150 to 200 points lower from the day's highest point. Nifty ending with uh, gains of nearly 60 odd points, 25,440 is where the Nifty is ending today. Remember, banks were gainers yesterday. We saw that big jump up of about 500 points on Nifty Banking Index yesterday. And the trend continued today. Nifty Bank continued to outperform. 320 points gain over there. 53,070 is where Nifty Bank ended. Some of the top gainers on Nifty, let's put the spotlight on NTPC on the back of news that company subsidiary has uh, filed for an IPO for SEBI. Uh, the stock was holding uh, uh, with gains of nearly 3%, one of the top gainers on Nifty 50 index. Apart from this, Kotak Mahindra Bank and Nestle were other top gainers on Nifty. On the losing side though, let's talk about Nifty um, PSU Banking Index. We saw that downtrend come in yesterday. Today also Nifty PSU Banking Index was the biggest sectoral loser. We had the likes of Punjab and Sindh Bank, IOB and Yuko Bank, some of the top losers on that list. Apart from this, all marketing companies, BPCL, HPCL, IOCL, all these three stocks saw cuts of over 3% today on the back of reports which suggested that perhaps fuel price cuts could be undertaken, BPCL ending the day 3.5% lower. Vodafone Idea and Indus Tower, the, the big news makers of the day, after that Supreme Court verdict. We had Vodafone Idea down nearly 19% and Indus Tower was also sitting with a cut of 8.5%. On the flip side though, Bharti Airtel touched record highs in today's trading session. Apart from that, Excite Industries was also in focus. City came out with a report where they go went ahead and cut their target price to 560. Excite Industries down 2%. A whole host of Alcobev stocks were also in focus today on the back of a uh, decision that came in from Andhra Pradesh government where they've gone ahead and come up with their, with their new liquor policy. We had United Breweries up 3.5%. United Spirits and Radico Khetan were also gaining in trade today on the back of this news flow. Apart from that, uh, Brain B Solutions, a recently listed entity where we had uh, two big brokerage reports that came in. Morgan Stanley, which has initiated an outperform rating with a target price of 818. We also had a BOFA note, the stock uh, sitting with uh, gains of nearly 1.5%. AU Small Finance Bank, let's also talk about this stock where Motila Loswal uh, came out with a report where they are maintaining their buy stance and a target price of 830. So clearly we had a whole host of news makers and movers in trade today. But at the index level, Nifty of course ending with gains of nearly 60 odd points. But that's all the time we have on this edition of the store. Stay tuned to ET now.